it. So Danny Flex and four seconds out. Delighted to be joined by top trainer, former European champion as well as a pro, Jamie Moore. How you doing? I'm all right, mate. Okay. Yeah, good. You look, you're looking very relaxed in uh, isolation while you're waiting for tomorrow night's show. Yeah, mate. I've I've literally just got here because um because I've been in the gym this week, lad. So um so has been down here with Mark. Um, Asam Fiat so Akib's brother he came down first early with him Nice came down after he finished his shifts as a fireman and then um, and then I've just got in now so that I can be clear to do the corner tomorrow so um, so I'm just laying in bed relaxed uh, How did you find the test? Is it your first one? or No, you've been in camp obviously with, with Chantel haven't you? Right. Mate, I've had I think that was my fifth one now but, uh, <laughs> the, gag, the, the gag reflex isn't getting any better let's put it that way <laughs> It'd be a bit worrying if it was like nice and relaxed now, though, wouldn't it? I suppose. Yeah, yeah, mate. He's not getting used to it. Let's talk about Saturday night's fight. It's it's an intriguing kind of subplot in that um, Ashfak used to train in the same gym as you guys. Trained, of course, then by Kelvin Travis, Nigel's dad. Um, yeah. What? How did you kind of find Kez when he was there? Did you guys all get on very friendly with him and Mark as well? Yeah, of course. He's, um, you know, like we say, no Kez for a few years. And um, so they trained in the gym with us, but not specifically with us. Like you said, he was with Kelvin. Kelvin's got a lot of history with Kez going going back to the to the amateurs and stuff. So um, so Mark and Kez have done plenty of rounds of sparring together. So you can imagine. And uh, and they've both got that sort of counter-punching uh, back foot style, which in general wouldn't make for a great fight. But, you know, I think it's one of them situations where because they've done that many rounds together, there's not going to be that sort of feeling out process. They know each other inside out and um, and it, it pretty much should just take off where it left um, from, from where the sparring was. So um, And it was always competitive. So so this isn't obviously a fight. Mark's the underdog. Um, and, you know, when you look at it on paper, rightly so, um, he's coming up away. Um you know, Kezzy's that naturally a little bit bigger than him, but um, and, and and Mark's not got an unbeaten record, but um, you know, he lost his debut and then he's got a draw on his record where he, he took his foot off the gas. He was he was winning the fight quite easily out in Zimbabwe, he was, and uh, and he took his foot off the gas and ended up getting a draw. So um, so he's probably been his own worst enemy in that sense, Mark, where he's such a talented fighter, it becomes a little bit too easy for him, and then. He, he sort of takes his foot off the gas. But this is probably the ideal scenario for him in that, well, number one, it's a, a, a life-changing opportunity for him. You know, big, first time on a big TV show. Second of all, he knows Kez, so he's, there's no, no surprises there. And, and thirdly, he's probably going to suit Mark that there's no crowd because, you know, there won't be the, um, the sort of nerves and adrenaline which would usually come with your first big slot on TV. So, um, so I think even though it's a difficult fight and we know the dangers of the fight and we know the difficulties what it's going to be presented with, I think it's um, a lot of the stuff is stacked in Mark's favour. If there'd been a normal kind of time at the moment where fights were more freely available, a lot more shows going on, do you think you still would have taken this fight? Because as you said, he's one of the best bantamweights in the country, but he's moving up for this one. We'd have taken it. And, and the only reason I say that is because... Mark's not a big ticket seller, so so he doesn't get presented with a lot of opportunities. He has to take this. You know, it's not like he's getting any younger. He's not old by any stretch of the imagination, but um, but Mark's got to be one. He's, he's going to have to be the sort of fighter who grasps this opportunity with both hands because if he loses this fight, it's going to be even more evident how good he is and how difficult he is to beat. So, so then it's going to be even it's going to be even harder to match him up. So um, so but like I say, it's a great opportunity for him. I'm more than confident he can win. You know, going off um, the the sparring, he was always competitive. But all of a sudden, as soon as this fight got mentioned three three weeks ago, four weeks ago, there was a change in Mark's um, demeanor in the gym. He's always you know I've known Mark since he was six years old. He used to train with us at Oliver's gym. Um, and everyone was saying back then he'll be a world champion. Everyone who sees him spar goes, this kid's one of the most naturally talented kids you've ever seen. And there always seems to be that something little ingredient what you'd like to add where it 
sparks him and then you you know you'll bring the best out in him and up till this point he's we've probably struggled to bring it out in him and then all of a sudden three weeks ago as soon as this fight got mentioned it wasn't actually this fight to be honest the first fight what got mentioned was cash farouk and we took that as well and then for whatever reason that that didn't happen but then they came back and said what about kez ashraq so obviously there was a it was a bit awkward with the situation with Nigel's dad and stuff in the previous history but it wasn't anything we could think about turning down because we needed to give Marty opportunity. And I wanted to talk to you as well. Earlier this month, Chantel Cameron won a WBC super lightweight title. Your first, I believe, WBC belt as a trainer. And yeah. you kind of heading yeah, towards yeah. that WBC belt as a fighter as well. So does that mean quite a lot to you? Is there is there an element of that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, everyone, I, I'm, I'm certainly... Um, of the opinion that the WBC is always that belt where you, you sort of look to, especially when I was a kid, I always looked up to it, and that was the one. Um, and like you say, I, you know, I got very close. I was, I was rated number one at one point in the in the ratings. Then they dropped me to number two because Floyd Mayweather decided to challenge um, Oscar De La Hoya, and there was a lot of stuff going on. So, so yeah, it it was a brilliant night. You know, great, great. Um, occasion one that will live long in the memory for me um not not so much because of the wbc but because of the journey what chantelle had been on and what i what i knew what it meant for her so to see somebody fulfill you know i always wanted to be a world champion i think every fighter does um i never got the opportunity to to even challenge for it but to see somebody else fulfill their lifelong ambition is just it's you know it's it's definitely the, the closest thing you can ever get to doing it yourself and it could be the first of many as a trainer, you would hope. I'd hope so, mate. Yeah, I think um, considering this is relatively new for us, you know, um, at the first time I ever cornered someone properly was seven years ago. And then and then for the next four years, it was just basically a hobby helping me mate out, Tommy Coyle. And then it, over the last three years, it sort of really took momentum and, and gathered weight and um, and in that short period of time, we seem to have achieved quite a bit and we've got a big stable of fighters and everyone seems to be enjoying themselves and we're getting the best out of them. So um, so it's all going well, mate. Yeah, long may continue. One of your stable who's got a world title fight booked, if you like, is Jack Catterall, of course. Well, it recently was revealed, not by him, but by Josh Taylor, that he's agreed to step aside to allow a undisputed clash to take place first between Taylor and Jose Ramirez. Did you have much input into that decision? Um, not the decision, because obviously it's just my job to train Jack. It's, it's Jack and, and his management team, MTK, but they was uh, behind it all. But obviously, um, whatever decision they came to and what Jack decided to do ultimately was was going to be the right one. You know, I did have conversations with Jack and he was asking me what I think. And basically, I was saying, you'll never know what the right decision is because, you know, whichever path you go down, you can never then come back down that path and go down the other one and see what would have happened. So so it's, as I said, basically, go with your gut instinct, um, whatever the best deal on the table for you and your family, you know, he's got a little baby on the way and um, he's waited long enough and I think the selling point for him was, it's, does he fight for one belt or does he give them guys the opportunity to fight for four belts and then fight for four belts against the undisputed. He feels Josh Taylor's probably got the edge and he's going to come out on top. Yeah. And then it becomes a massive all British fight for four belts instead. And he'll get paid more money. So, you know, even though it's probably short term loss, it's long term gain is, as far as he's, he's concerned. And, and he's been told he's going to get a fight in the interim himself as well. He'll probably box in December as well. So, uh, so it made sense. And in the long run, in the bigger picture, it made sense for him as well. And also, of course, fans will hopefully be back by next year. He could get his shot at Josh Taylor on a massive UK show. Yeah, I know. I think, I've seen interviews with Josh saying that he'd like to box outdoors in Edinburgh, I think it was. Um, you know, so for me, in an ideal situation when the crowds are back and, you know, Josh... Um, sticks to his word and gives Jack first shot all the belts and on you know a big occasion like that when he's one of the probably one of the first big fights in the UK um, when crowds are back so it'd be a great occasion and and then that would be for me 
talking to Jack before all this scenario unfolded about going where you got and, and you know, um, eventually, what I've said to him is basically, if you follow your gut, you'll get to the, a certain point in your life and then you'll go, there you go. That was the, the whole reason it was, it was all unfolding that way. So, um, a bit of visualisation and hopefully <laughs> next April next April or May we're up in Edinburgh outdoors against Josh Taylor. Great stuff. 